You must know that first. Can't nothing and nobody fade what we're trying to do and what we're about to do. Second thing is, we got this game on our level. You understand what I'm saying? Yo, another episode in space. I'm your host, Chris Connor. Y'all see our sponsorships below. DraftKings Sportsbook, home of the 5 for the 150. As always, y'all tap in and use that promo code BOOT if you have not signed up yet. Have somebody in your family, uncle, auntie, son, brother, mother, dog, boost the code. Um, our people at New York Life and Birdsaw Law Firm are also sponsors, man. Shout out to y'all for continuing to rocking with us. I think we at episode 35. The funny part is, it's probably my 35th time re-recording this. This is it. I'm gonna get this one right, and we are out. But yo, um, yo, man, it's in the title, right? We're here talking about some trade rumors that have dropped today from some um some very high-ranking NBA reporters, and you know, we gotta talk about it. We talk about trades all the time on Twitter, and I'm not on Facebook, but I'm sure Instagram, you know, it's what especially in the NBA, it's talked about all the time. And now as we inch closer to um, All-Star break and the trade deadline, today is just the start of many players and many teams that are going to be talked about going forward. So um, let's dive into it. Look at New Orleans. They actually have assets. Like if they want to go and get serious with an OG on a newbie or a yeah. Pascal Siakam, they've got all their picks. They've got the Lakers picks. That's why when they made, you know, they're one of the teams that did call the Nets. So Shams in that video talked about Pascal Siakam and OG on a newbie. Now Pascal is completely off the wall to me. Um, just cause I haven't heard any, um, I just don't I don't think about Pascal Siakam as a possible um addition, but Chaz talked about him. Y'all talk about this guy. Hold on. Shout out to Scoop talking about OG again and Gary Trina. We're gonna we're gonna get to OG, but before I do that, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. If you think I'm here to play around with y'all, God damn it on that. All right. Yo, whether y'all like his content, whether y'all like his videos or not, whether um, you seem to be a fan of somebody you've never met. Chaz talked about Gary Trent Jr. in October. <laughs> like, and I saw a lot of people calling him crazy. A lot of people saying, you know, he was, you know, uh, off the wall. And there was no need to break up what was happening right now. There was no need to make any, any moves of such. But here we are. And I've seen... A lot of Gary Trent Jr. Tr uh, tweets and more and more in the past week. He was the first person I saw talk about him. Now, granted, Bogdan Bogdanovich was talked about in the offseason. And I think there's a lot of people that also agreed that this team needed to be looking at uh, the main upgrades were shooting and rim protection. That's what the main, I guess, combination that I've been seeing dating back to the offseason, even before we knew what Zion would look like. Um, during his return, but yeah, man, got to give Chaz his flowers. In fact, Pascal Siakam and OJ Ananobi, he dropped a video I want to say a couple weeks ago about those two. So, look, man, whether y'all, you know, whether y'all agree with all of his videos, whether you know, you are you know, you a fan or you tune in, hot takes with Chad Chaz, man, he be on it, man. So, I want to, you know, get some flowers to, to our. To our colleague here at Buku Media. So shout out to Bro. Um, I'm well, moving forward here. So the names that we'll mention, Gary Trent Jr., OJ Ananobi, Pascal Siakam. We know what Gary Trent can bring. Shooting um is able to score with the basketball in his hand. He can't create his own. And he's been in the league for a little bit, kind of understanding uh, standing of his role, whether it's off the bench as a six-man type or starting in some stretches if someone's hurt, or that's just what's what he's asked to do. So we get that fit there, especially when you look at just the, the offensive responsibility that's been put on a lot of different guys due to injuries. You know, I, I, I can't say it. I'm not a doctor a hundred percent, but you know, I think that if you, this team was close to healthy or they had another individual that could create for themselves, maybe you're not looking at Zion um, 
getting a hamstring strain, just playing 40 minutes, 38 minutes, 39 minutes a night to win games. Um, and with you, uh, against good teams, it's going to take that. But the amount of energy that one, especially one like Zion, has to exude to make that happen, if you can find a way to make that easier, um, if you can't count on health consistently, guys like Gary Trent make sense. Now, OJ Ananobi. One more thing to point out on Gary Trent. I'm sure as you know he's a free agent upcoming, so you got to make a decision on him going forward. But I like that idea. OJ Ananobi. That video or that screenshot, it came and went. But if you follow me, I've been a fan of bro for about three years now. Just, you know, just watching his game, just uh, – I think I, I paid more attention to him after the championship because, you know, you watch him and it just looked like, man, he was in a wonderful spot being able to kind of develop in the shadows. He came into the game a really good defender, similar to how Herb did, but he came in the game younger as well. And his offensive game has just gotten better and better. His ability to create for others. He's somehow gotten better defensively, causing the most turn, forcing the most turnovers right now. He's on a rate, um, a, a career high rate. I think now a 2.2. And he's adjusted to whatever's, he, whatever's been asked of him. And that's going to be really important if you do make a move for a guy like him. Because while I think he had a Kawhi Leonard type leap in front of him, he got hurt. And maybe Toronto mismanaged a few things with some of the talents that also needed the ball around him. You end up in a situation where you're taking Scotty Barnes and then, you know, your um, the the point of emphasis in regards to who's going to have the ball in their hands is shifted to where the first year after Kawhi left, there were many nights where it was OG's show. And then through injuries and misfortune, now he's more of a, you know, he's lower in the pecking order in regards to who's getting the basketball, but he's doing the most of it. You know I mean? Well, he's, he's doing the, the most with it and making the most of it. Efficiency wise, he's shooting the ball really well. Um, his numbers have gotten better every single year, almost like, like for, for real, for real, they've gotten better. I think he's had increases at a good majority of, of statistical categories every single year. And that's been involving a lot of different switches and roles, minutes, you know, um, talents around him. Other guys taking steps and leaps forward. He's been one of the most consistent guys or the most consistent guy when he's out there night to night because you kind of know what to expect from him. And he's a tremendous defender. So I don't know what OG would cost and I don't know if what Toronto if Toronto would move him they got a lot of different individuals that they probably got to make decisions on but if you get a guy like OG or if you can get him dude like him uh, you know I say you do what you got to and here's the thing one more thing on OG I've heard a few different even before the reports today I talked to a few different people that said that you know the OG talk is you know, it's real if last year CJ was the Pelicans guy, right? He was the guy that they wanted. I know, I know we heard deer and Fox rumors as well, but if CJ was the guy last year, OG might be the guy this year. And here's where we go into the assets part of it, because for the first time in franchise history, the Pelicans pretty much have to, they can do what they want. They don't have to wait till something becomes on sale. They can just buy it. They can afford it. And that would mean for Big talents, larger talents, whether that be um, some of the best in the game, if a superstar wants out, or whether that be someone, maybe an all a fringe all star, whether that mean you know a, a, a high end role player, their flexibility between young players, them winning games right now, the established stars they have on the team right now when they're available to play, and their draft picks going forward, it's the best that it's ever been, and from a draft from a from an asset chest treasure chest wise i don't know if there's a team that has more to offer than the pelicans right now if they if they want an individual and want to put their best offer on the table um and in some cases they may still have the leverage even though a team knows that they have extra to give you know um it's gonna be interesting to see how this how this plays out because we've never seen this franchise if you've been here whether you you've been a fan of five years ten years and you date back to oh two i don't think you've ever seen a team of the franchise in this shape to where they can just wake up one day and decide they want to trade for somebody and they can probably get them, you know? So 
Very interested to see how that goes. A few other guys that we got to mention here before we get out of here. Uh, we got to talk about um, Bogdanovich there, Bo- Boyan in Detroit. We talked about him a lot in the offseason in Utah, being a guy that you can probably get for cheap. I think he ended up going for a couple seconds, if I'm correct. But listen, he's 33 years old. Um, do you want to give an unprotected first? Is Detroit just bluffing? Will they take a protected first? Will, do they want a future first? Maybe not one this next year, the year afterwards. Um, do they want um, any kind of player return with it? Maybe someone with high ops, upside, a former lottery pick. Curious. We'll see how that how that goes. Or do they decide to ultimately keep him? Seems like in the talk has been a lot of in, a, a lot of teams are interested in Boyan and maybe a bidding war could take place. But similar to what we just talked about, the Pelicans decide that they want to put the best offer on the table to beat a good majority of those teams, if not all, probably could. And we know what Boyan can offer for you. Shooting, um, another dude that can create for himself in some stretches, decent passer. Even at 33, um, very, I think, underrated defender. He was much, he was better, I think, in younger years. But if you put him on some forwards, he's not, it's not going to be a walk in the park. I'm not saying he's a shutdown guy at any, you know, at any stretches. But um, I think similar to how Joe Ingles has been when he's healthy, um, the guy, you know, Boyan can hold his own. And we know he can shoot the basketball and his team desperately, desperately can use, I think, another option there. Um, and any team that has Zion Williamson is going to want to add as much shooting as they possibly can within, within realms. Um, and look, you know, for nights, if Brandon Ingram is out, Brandon Ingram is hurt. Boyan slides right in and he can end up playing minutes. Um, or if Zion's hurt and Brandon's available, you can go that route. We've seen Brandon at the four for some stretch. Boyan's played the four some nights here in Utah. I've seen Boyan play the shooting guard position. You can uh, position. You can do a lot with him, and I think the overall roster flexibility that this team has been trying to put together, he's another guy that fits that. So we'll see how that ends. Two other guys I want to talk about are Malik Beasley and um, Nas Reed. Now, former teammates, Malik's in Utah. Nas is in uh, Minnesota now. Uh, Malik's a guy who can – you know, solid shooter can create for his own kind of one of those microwave types off the bench help score. This team could use that. They could use someone that could pull up 15 points in a quick in a hurry to give some of your main guys a rest. And look, a lot of this is still based off the fact that um, if individuals are going to be in and out of the lineup, you got to continue to build around them. You got to end up, you got to continue to build around a team that you're not sure about health wise for an 82 game season. And then Nas, if I had to tell you the biggest or my biggest one in the offseason, along with so many other individuals, shout out to David Grubb, Five talked about it a lot, Lido, Chaz, all of us at Buku Media, Justin, Ross. Um, we talked about another big being being added. Um, Rim Protector was the was the prototype. And I don't I wouldn't necessarily call Nas that, but he's an upgrade. And even if he's not a your traditional rim protector. 6'9, 260. Um, not gonna block a whole bunch of shots necessarily. He plays so hard, man. And he can offer you things on the other side of the floor as well. Decent shooter, can handle the ball for his size, has improved his passing, and knows his role. Not gonna get in the way of anyone else's. And that's what's interesting, most interesting about the players that have been named that intrigue me the most. Also, Nas Reed's nickname is Big Jelly, which is crazy. Malik Beasley's nickname is The Mutant. I don't know where people get these nicknames from, but it's unbelievable. But, yeah, man, um, that's what makes me most interested in guys like OG, Bogdan, Nas Reed and company, Malik Beasley. These guys have played in a league to where they know their role. Like, no matter what team they go to, Teams can plug them right in immediately and say, well, you're not going to be doing much different from what you did in everywhere else. Maybe some nice way I said you ask you to do more, but we want you to we're bringing you in to do what you're comfortable with. And that benefits everybody. And I think players that you bring in like that, you know, versus maybe some younger talents that are still trying to figure out who they are as individuals. 
Uh, OG Ananobi is very interesting because I still think he can be a he can be a, a star in this league. And at some point, he may be tired of just wanting to fit in as a role player. He may want to pursue being a higher option on a team, a bigger priority um, than versus just a really high end two way guy who can um, kind of be the man some nights. He may want that responsibility more nights than not again. So, but good majority, but even OG, they've all been a part of teams that have put them in certain kind of roles and have asked them to be themselves for better or for worse. And I think that's what you want to add. That's what the Pelicans have for the most part currently right now. There's there's some there's some parts that are out of that are out of place, but if you can add more individuals that upgrade your talent, because remember, guys, I mean we can't forget it's all about at least and athletics. We controlling this shit, and that's how we feel from the heart. Whether you're adding talent, whether you're adding good fits, I'm happy that even I in the beginning felt like wanted to have as much on film as I could as the, you know, with the trio of BI, CJ and Zion as possible to figure out what worked best around them. I think we're running out of time this season to do that and kind of is what it is. So right now, what you have, you need an upgrade. And even if you wanted to, my goal was to maybe pivot that into the off season, maybe, you know, give it a year. Well, look, we're here and certain guys are, are available. They may not be available next year, make the move, People keep saying the Western Conference is wide open. People keep saying even the East is undecided. Like you, ha you have a chance to make a run. Next year could look totally different. Do it now. Doesn't mean you have to be desperate, but make it happen. Add a talent, and you know, really put your team in a situation where injuries or not, they can play with almost any team in this league. And you know, that's what good teams do. And if you want to sustain this going forward, man, a move, especially like OJ Ananobi, who's just a perk who I'm biased towards, that it'd be dope, man. It'd be um you you knock the trading deadline aspect to me out of the park. So uh before we get out of here, man, definitely want to show some love to our to our guys at Birds, our law firm. Um they're located at 918 Porter Street, right by the Superdome. Um, the official injury lawyers here at Buku Media. If you or anyone you know have been in an accident, be sure to mention that we sent you here. The official injury lawyers of Buku Media. Appreciate y'all tapping with everything that we got going on here at Buku. And you know how we get out of here. In the building. I told you last time, get with us. Well, get out of here, man.